Hi, this is Holly. You're watching a video on the introduction to organic chemistry brought to you by the Science Hive. So organic chemistry basically involves um, these molecules called hydrocarbons. Um, hydrocarbons are molecules that contain carbon and hydrogen only. So you're not going to find any other elements like oxygen or nitrogen or fluorine or anything else in there, only carbon and hydrogen. So that's important to remember. It can often be a two marker on the exam. You're going to get that second mark for writing that word only. Okay, so the other thing that you can see here is the, these hydrocarbons, uh, even though that they both contain carbon and hydrogen, they differ in the number of hydrogens they contain. So the one on the left, you've only got single carbon to carbon bonds. Because it's got only single carbon to carbon bonds, it can hold on to more hydrogen. So every atom is holding on to as many hydrogens as possible. If you look at the hydrocarbon on the right hand side, you've got one carbon to carbon double bond, this thing here, which means that uh, there's fewer hydrocarbon, um, sorry, there's fewer hydrogens attached to those carbon atoms because it's using an extra bond to to bond with a carbon rather than another hydrogen. So in this hydrocarbon, we've only got uh, six hydrogens compared to eight on the left. Now, when a hydrocarbon is connected by only single carbon bonds, we call that a saturated hydrocarbon. And when a carbon, um, when a hydrocarbon has at least one carbon to carbon double bond, we call that unsaturated. Now, another word for a saturated hydrocarbon is an alkane. And another word for an unsaturated hydrocarbon is an alkene. And we'll talk a little bit more about those in a minute. You need to know how to name hydrocarbons. And if you remember this phrase, monkeys eat peeled bananas, it makes it quite easy for you. So each of the those first letters of each of those words corresponds to the first letter of the prefix of the hydrocarbon. So M stands for meth, whoops, M stands for meth, ETH stands for ETH, uh, peeled stands for probe, and bananas stands for butte. Okay, so let's go through the alkanes. Remember, those were the hydrocarbons that only contained single carbon to carbon bonds. In other words, they're saturated. Um, for monkeys, it would be methane. Eat ethane. Peeled propane. And bananas is butane. Okay, so those words are telling us how many carbons are in those hydrocarbons. Methane indicates that there's just one, one carbon atom. Ethane is two carbon atoms. Propane is three and butane is four. From five carbon atoms onwards, it gets a little bit more obvious. So five carbon atoms is um, pentane. Six carbon atoms is hexane. 7 is, is heptane, 8 is octane, so on. Um, really, you'll probably just be asked about between 1 and 4 carbon atoms on the exam. Uh, so, yeah, that, t that tells you, uh, that's how you name hydrocarbons. You use those prefixes, and then the ending comes from what type of molecule it was. So the ones I've written out here for alkanes, if it was an alkene, so something with a double carbon bond, you would replace the A with an E. Sorry, replace the A with an E. So ethane becomes ethene. Propane becomes propene. Butane becomes butene. You can't have an alkene with one. 
you don't get methane because you can't have a double carbon bond with just one carbon. But yeah, so the rest of them you would just replace, replace the endings here. So you'd have ene on the end. So there's different ways of representing hydrocarbons using different formulas. Uh, you can see here that there's you could use a displayed formula, you could use a molecular formula, an empirical formula, a general formula, or a structural formula, all to represent the same molecule. We'll run through each of these using the example propene. So remember, propene has three carbons. Meth, eth, prop is one, two, three. Or monkeys eat peeled. And ene tells you that it has a double carbon bond, or it's an alkene, because it's got E and E on the end. So if we were drawing the displayed formula, we just need to draw something that has three carbon atoms. And one of those carbons needs to be joined by a double carbon bond rather than a single carbon bond. Because only um, because carbons can only form four bonds, we know that the hydrogens are going to look something like this. So this carbon's got one, two, three, four. This carbon's now got one, two, three, four. This one's got one, two, three, four. I can just fill this in with hydrogens. So you can see that the displayed formula is basically showing all of the atoms and the bonds displayed. So it looks something like that. The molecular formula is, it tells you how many carbons and hydrogens you have. Um, so how many atoms are actually in the molecule. And we can just group them all together. So we're just going to write C3 H6. We've got three carbons and six hydrogens. Now the empirical formula is um, the molecular form formula simplified as small as it can go. So the way we work out the empirical formula is to divide those numbers by the biggest number that they can both divide into. In that case, that's 3. So we're going to divide 3 by 3. We've got 1. Divide 6 by 3. That gives us 2. So our empirical formula is CH2. The general formula is a bit more tricky. You might it might help for you just to, to memorize these, but the general formula for alkenes is C N H two N. And we'll have a look at what that means. So N just means when you have a certain number of carbon atoms. 2n means the same number times by 2 is how many hydrogen atoms you've got. And you can see that that fits with the molecular formula of propene. So if we have three carbon atoms, then we know we've got six hydrogen atoms because you just need to times n by 2. Now, the general formula for alkanes is CnH2n plus 2. So if we were talking about propane rather than propene, you would have C3H8, because you do 3 times 2 is 6, plus another 2. Okay, the last one, the structural formula, is kind of just involves us writing out the groups of atoms as a list. So in this case, we're going to write out this group of atoms, CH3, then, oops, so this group here, CH3, then this one, CH, dual bound to the carbon, and then this last one, CH2 over here. So the structural formula could be CH3, CH, CH, so we just write it out like that so we can see how they're connected to each other but without having to draw it all out. If you've already started doing an introduction to organic chemistry at school, you've probably heard this word homologous series. Now, a homologous series is just a family of molecules that share the same uh, general formula. 
So here we've got the alkane homologous series. They all share the same general formula, CnH2n plus 2. Uh, so you can see as you go um, as you go from each member of that homologous series, you're adding CH2 each time. The other way that um, the other property that homologous series shares are that they react the same way in chemical reactions. So we say that they have the same chemical properties. So for example, if one alkene reacts with bromine um, to form a bromoalkane, then you can expect all of them to take part in the same kind of reaction. Okay, the last thing that the members of a homologous series have in common is that they show trends in their physical properties. Physical properties are things like their state of matter, their boiling point, their melting point. Okay, and the trend that we can see here is we're going from methane all, all along the way to hexane. Um, those molecules are getting bigger and their boiling point increases because they're forming more intermolecular forces between the molecules that need more energy to break. Yeah, so we're seeing this trend with an increase in boiling point along that homologous series. So as well as the alkane homologous series, there's four others that you need to be able to recognise. Each of them have different functional groups. You can see the functional groups circled below. So the one on the left is the homologous series of alkenes. They contain the carbon to carbon double bond that we mentioned before. Um, you could also describe them as unsaturated hydrocarbons. Um, the alcohols have the OH functional group. Um, and by the way, you're going to you're going to name these in exactly the same way, um, except you, you're changing the endings each time. So for alkenes, it would be ethene, propene, butene and so on. For the alcohols, it would be methanol, ethanol, propanol. Uh, the carboxylic acid functional group is this COOH. These are weak acids. Um, and you would name them again in the same way. So methanoic acid, ethanoic acid, propanoic acid. Um, they're, yeah, they're really weak acids. You find them in things like um, vinegar and citrus fruits. And then the last one is the esters. The functional group is COO, carbon double bound to an oxygen, single bound to an oxygen. And um, these have a slightly more complicated naming system that we'll cover on a separate video. Okay, so isomers are molecules that have the same molecular formula, but a different structural formula. Okay, so that basically means that you've got the same number of each, each type of atom, but they're arranged in different ways. The first type of isomer that you need to know about are the chain isomers. So let's have a go at drawing a chain isomer of pentane that you can see here. Let's just copy pentane over. What we're going to do is just, instead of having this one long chain of carbons, we're going to break up that carbon chain by adding uh, branch groups instead. So let's take this carbon off the end and stick it on the second carbon. We can draw that over here. It's a little bit. Not much room, but you get the idea. And then we can take off 
another one again if we wanted to and pop that over here to have two groups two CH3 groups on that second carbon so this molecule that we've just drawn the isomer of pentane would be called dimethyl dimethyl propane so it's got two methyl groups and now the longest chain is three carbons you could also have kind of what we had before so you could have just left that as the as a chain of four with just one branch group that would also be a, a chain isomer of pentane and you would call that methyl butane okay so chain isomers are basically just arranging that chain differently another type of isomer are called the position isomers Okay, and this is when you've got a functional group that's in a different position. So let's introduce a functional group by adding a double carbon bond and making this into pentene instead. Okay, so um, with a position isomer, if I just copy this, we just all we need to do is pop that functional group in a different position. So instead of having that alkene functional group after the second carbon, maybe I can move it right into the middle here and have it on the third carbon instead. Just make sure that every carbon is attached. It's using just only four bonds. We need to get rid of that hydrogen. And there we have it. So we would call this um, pent-2-ene and pent-3-ene, and they would be position isomers. I could also do it, let's say, let's turn this into an alcohol. So I could have an alcohol functional group on the second carbon on one molecule, and I could have an alcohol functional group on the third carbon of another molecule. Again, we've got position isomers because those functional group are in different positions. So pentan 2 ol pentan 3 ol are position isomers. The last type of isomer are um, functional group isomerism. Okay, and this is basically where you've got two molecules with the same atoms, but they're arranged so you have two different functional groups. So maybe one might be a carboxylic acid, and the other could be an ester. Okay, so if we just convert one of these into a carboxylic acid, I can show you what, what we mean. So let's have pentanoic acid over here. And instead of, in the, in the second isomer, instead of having um, the carboxylic acid functional group, Maybe I have the ester functional group, which remember looked look like this. So I've still got my five carbons, um, except I've just got an ester functional group in the middle somewhere. So it would look like that. And I need to get rid of that hydrogen, so it's only forming four bonds. But either way, the number of hydrogens are the same. So I've got the same number of each atom, five carbons, two oxygens and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten hydrogens on each side. Oh, I just need to add one here. Okay, so you can see one side, carboxylic acid, the other side, an ester, but they would both have the same molecular formula. They only differ in their structural formulae. And that's everything. I hope you found that useful. Um, please leave feedback, and if you want to comment uh, with topics for future videos that um, you would find handy, then please do. Thanks.